Kravar is an Indonesian company run by some of the friendliest people I have ever met, and in the last couple of years, I have been asked time and time again whether the Kravar CO is a comparable alternative to the Filson original briefcase. And now that the, the Filson original briefcase is $450, the Kravar costs only 60% of that, so almost half of what this thing costs. How do the two compare? Well, that's what we're going to get into in this video right here. Hello and welcome, I'm Carl Morawski, and this is the channel that helps you own less and own better. Now, just to put my own biases out there, because they do exist, all right, like, let's be fair. I'm very disappointed in Filson. I think that the way that they've gone ever since Bedrock Manufacturing got a hold of them has, has just been like, just one bad choice after another. Unfortunately, because I used to love the company. They still make some great products, and I think this is among them. I did a whole video on that if you want to check it out. It's all about the, the products that Filson still makes that are, are still worth buying. But I got to tell you, I am so disappointed with that company. I hope that somebody can turn it around. I don't see it happening, but, you know, we'll see. Now, conversely, Kravar, as I mentioned, they are run by some of the friendliest people I've ever met. Anytime I've had to reach out with questions about how their bags are constructed or how heavy something is or whatever material they're using just for my own information on making these videos. They have been so kind, so responsive. Um, and honestly, a lot of their products, I've reviewed two of their products in the past, have been great, especially when it comes to the price. So you're looking at a very, very high value for these things. So my own biases, honestly, I want the Kravar to win over the Filson. I'll, I'll just get that out there right in the, in the open, all right? So just so you know where I'm coming from. That being said, I'm gonna to try to keep it as neutral as possible so that you can make the best choice for yourself. And this is not a one size fits all kind of thing. Some people are gonna say, cool, I like the feature set of the Filson better, that's what I'm gonna buy. Other people are gonna say, you kidding me? For, for basically half, I'll buy two of the Kravar and have one waiting in the wings when I just wanna change out a color. Who you are is all gonna depend on what you value, so let's get into it. The current price for the Filson original briefcase is $450, and it's made in the USA from imported materials. I know their rugged twill is made in Britain, and I think that their leather is made in the US. The Kravar CO is $270 for the 15-inch model, $250 for the 13-inch model, and it's made in Indonesia from mostly Indonesian materials. The dimensions of the Filson are 16 inches long, 12 and a half inches high, and four inches wide. The dimensions of the Kravar are 15 and three quarter inches long, 12 inches high, and three and a half inches wide. So the Filson is slightly larger overall. Both are made from heavy duty wax twill fabric, which feels similar in thickness, though the Filson seems to have a heavier wax treatment. Both use leather trim and straps. The Filson is in their own veg tan bridal leather, and the Kravar is in an Indonesian vegetable tanned leather. You'll notice that the Kravar pieces are in fact two layers of leather which is stitched together, where the Filson appears to be one big thick layer. Both feature solid brass hardware, and while the rings are different shapes, they do appear to be similar in thickness. It's a different situation with the zippers, however, with the Filson being a much heavier gauge than the Kravar. This is all part of that overbuilt Filson style, but those larger teeth on the zipper can really scratch up a laptop without a sleeve. The Filson isn't lined, but it does feature a double bottom for durability. The Kravar is lined in acrylic fabric with leather bound edges, and it has a leather bottom for durability. Now, while we're inside these bags, something to note is that Filson has removed the pen slots and card holder from the current version. So inside you get one large compartment with two dividers. Inside the Kravar, there is a large padded divider, two smaller pockets, and a leather card holder. Filson's handles are sewn to the body of the bag, and the current version doesn't have the leather keeper you see here. Kravar went for adjustable handles which wrap around the entire bag and have a wrap on each handle which can be removed. The Kravar handles are also adjustable or can be entirely removed for cleaning or replacement. The Filson features two full width exterior pockets, one on either side, and these small pockets on the ends which are only big enough for very small items like a pen or pencil. The Kravar also has two full width exterior pockets, one with a snap closure. The Kravar has a luggage strap and the Filson does not. Now the attachment point of the shoulder strap rings is different on each. Filson went for a traditional approach with one D-ring on each end, while Kravar went for an asymmetrical mounting option with square rings on opposite faces of the bag. Additionally, Kravar attaches their shoulder strap with buckles rather than clasps. Now this is quieter, but slightly less flexible. 
The edges of the crevar are all finished with leather, where the filsons are not, they're just folded over and stitched. This is clearly not an issue with durability, but more of a stylistic choice, and I think that it dresses up the crevar a touch. So that's all the specs out of the way, but how are these things to use in everyday life? Well, the Filson has been great. It's been a long time companion of mine, as you can tell. This is actually, I actually got this one used. So this has the talon zippers and this, this keeper here, which again, that they've done away with. And I mean, a few other things they've stripped off the bag, but I gotta tell you, I do like this bag quite a bit. Do I like it $450 worth? No, but I paid significantly less for this one on the secondhand market. I love how floppy the leather has gotten over time, how much darker it's gotten, and that's what's gonna happen when you get a bag that's like from the 70s, it's gonna look this way. But I love that. I mean, I love the fact that everything on it is just oily and kind of dirty and uh, used. I mean, this looks like something that Indiana Jones would carry, right? Now, that being said, as cool looking at as it is, and as much of a patina nerd as I am, there's been a few problems. The first one is sort of a catastrophic problem when it happens. Where they've attached their shoulder strap is more or less in the middle of the bag. As you can see, it's kind of right here, right? So there's a lot up here, and it's sort of in the middle of this section. When you pick up this bag, if it's not loaded properly with the heaviest stuff on the bottom, let's say you have a laptop in there and you kind of threw a few things in, and it maybe is a little top heavy, there has been a time or two I've picked this thing up and it has literally dropped all the stuff out of it because you lift it up and like I see, you know, you can see it kind of acts as a fulcrum. It just, you know what I mean? It's right in the middle. So this can happen and it is a, when you're trying to get out the, the door in the morning and uh, you know, you've got like a screaming toddler and all kinds of stuff going on, you pick up your bag and it all dumps out on the floor. It's just as bad as spilling your coffee in the morning. It just ruins your day. Now, that being said, you know, all this stuff can be kind of battened down so you can zip it closed. You can co uh, cover this thing right here, snap that and it's done. But these side pockets, there is no way to, to secure those. And a lot of times I'll put my keys in there. I mean, who knows what you're loading up in there? So there have been times where it's flipped over and all the stuff that's in the side there has dumped out. That kind of sucks. I wish that they had put these a little bit higher. So if you pick it up and it isn't loaded correctly, it won't do this floppy thing, which really, really, uh, that, that just kills me. Now, the other thing that I mentioned a little bit earlier is how heavy the gauge is that they used here on the zipper. Don't get me wrong. I mean, this thing is as smooth as butter. This is the old Talon zipper, like I mentioned. Now they use a Filson branded YKK, but it is nice and smooth. But these teeth right here, these, this is like a number 10 zipper, I think. That's a pretty big zipper. That's what you would see that on, on like a coat or something. These will absolutely pinstripe your brand new Mac book or whatever. You know, that like satin finish. You pull that thing out of there, unless you're really careful and kind of open that thing up, it's gonna shh along the sides. It's happened to me, that's why I'm saying. Um, and that kind of stinks. So it's best to get a sleeve if you're gonna do that. Um, or just, you know, make sure that you're really careful every time. Honest to God, I kind of wish that they didn't do that. But anyway, those are some of the drawbacks of the Filson. Now the Cravar, on the other hand, does not have that same issue with tipping over. As you can see, these D-rings are, where is it? I'm kind of looking at myself reversed, right? So the D-rings are at the top of the bag. On either side here, if you were gonna lift it up, I mean, it's, it's lifting from the top of the bag. So the weight is gonna go down. Never had an issue with it flipping over, although I have not had this as long. The Cravar also zips further down than the Filson. The Filson kind of zips down to maybe about here, and then you can open it up and work inside of it. The, fil the Cravar actually zips ab about halfway down the side of the bag, so you can really open that thing up and get in there if you need something. You know, you can kind of pull it back like that. I like that feature. It works really, really well. Now, things that I'm not a fan of on here, I think that, you know, this, this wire pull here is a little bit, since this zipper is a little bit smaller of a gauge, as you can see, it doesn't slide nearly as easily. It's also brand new, so sometimes, you know, those teeth need a little bit of time to sort of work in. That Filson is an older model. I know this is not an apples to apples comparison. This is a crisp new, uh, you know, version. But anyway, uh, I think that'll take a little bit of time to work in like that. I'm not actually a big fan of these little handle keeper things here because they are, they do have an edge to them because it's just wrapped around and then sewn. But the cool thing is that you can remove them all together if you just want to hold on to the strap. Or if you like that, you know, a little bit more right there, you can you can keep that. So, um, I mean, I, I don't I don't mind them. That's why they're still on there, but yeah, they're, they're okay. So, I mean, that's not really a gripe, but it's just something that I've noticed. Now, one other thing I wanted to mention was if you look at the actual construction, the method of support that you have here, 
This leather strap wraps around the entire bag and back up. It's actually one big strap that kind of goes around. The way they've done it is, is actually pretty unique. I think that's pretty amazing. As I mentioned, they do have a, a, an adjustment so you can make these handles a little bit taller or a little bit shorter, however you like it. But what I like about the way that it goes around the bag that way is that you're actually suspending the entire load with those, those straps. So you're actually kind of holding it in a basket, sort of. The material is not taking any of the, the, the abuse. Whereas the Filson, on the other hand, this, as you can tell, it's never been a problem. If this thing has lasted this long, this really is not a big problem. It's just sort of a structural thing that's in my mind. The fact that these are just, these are just kind of sewn to the body fabric right here and then they stop. They don't wrap around the entire thing. It's a little bit less leather. It kind of lends itself to the look of this, I think, which is a little bit more traditional, but I kind of like the idea of the, the leather going around the entire bag. You know, you're really supporting it with the strongest part. Then again, this thing's overbuilt. As you can tell, it's lasted forever. So this might just all be in my head, but um, I've always appreciated that kind of thing where you're really supporting the bag with the handle material that goes around it rather than the, the face material supporting the rest of it. Now the Filson, I know like the back of my hand, I've traveled with it, I've worked with it, I've done everything with this bag, it's been fantastic. The Cravard does not have that same advantage. I need a little bit more time with this thing to really learn about it, but I'll tell you this right off the bat, if I was to look at both of these bags and say, which one am I gonna buy? I mean, they more or less have the same kind of layout. They look similar. The size is approximately the same. Which one would I go with? Well, I'll tell you this much. If the Filson was still 325 bucks, this would be a much harder decision. I'd look at them both really carefully, take into consideration that the Filson is still made in the USA. I'm an American citizen, that matters to me. Um, all of those things, and then I would make my choice. But the fact of the matter is that this is 450 bucks now. It's just crazy what Filson is doing. This is 270. I'm telling you, I'd go with the 270 bucks. I, I, you know, I told you in the beginning, I have a bias. I wanted the, the Cravar to win. I just don't see any world that exists where the Cravar isn't a better value than the Filson. Now, the Filson is still, I mean, it's legendary, right? How are you gonna compare, how are you gonna compare one thing to the other? You know I mean? Like, it, it's just, this thing has been around forever. It's the default stylish rugged bag, right? So, I mean, it's like, it's always gonna be great, but I don't like what Filson is doing. I have a bit of a problem with what the company is, is doing at the moment with this like crazy price increase and all that. I'd like to see the underdog win. And I don't see anything here that really gives up much to the Filson. Certainly not for the price difference. But anyway, that's my two cents. I told you I was biased. I want you to choose for yourself and make sure you get the thing that uh, fits your needs the best and will solve your problems the best. Anyway, if you wanna see more videos on bags and luggage and stuff like that, I have done a bunch of videos on that. And you can check that out right here. I've made you a playlist. In that playlist, you can see like the early videos that I've done on stuff. I did some stuff on like leather briefcases back in the day to the most recent stuff that I did on the Ruer Tertassin Overlander series, which is fantastic. I wish they would make something like this. That'd be really cool, but they don't. Anyway, we got Cravar. So I'm psyched, cool, smaller brand. Guys will talk to you. Um, they're kind of what Filson used to be, which I really like. Anyway, guys, that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you next time.